What's going on guys and welcome back to yet another installment of Path to Platinum, this time being a sequel video or a sort of follow-up to one of my previously successful videos, uh, The Evil Within 2. This is following my first video, which I made many years ago, and after that video's success, just hit 10,000 views, figured might as well make a second one, so... Here we are, covering the second game, more than happy to do so, and I hope you guys are ready for the ride, but before we get into it, I just want to say that we will only be going over missable trophies and non-straightforward trophies, trophies that require at least somewhat of an explanation. There are a lot of straightforward trophies in the game, ones I don't really need to go over, so we're going to be glossing over those as well as any story-related trophies. And before we get into the video as well, I would just like to say that if you guys do find this video helpful and you appreciate it, then I would really appreciate some support in return if you would just so kindly leave a like and subscribe. And hey, I live stream all the time. I do trophy hunting literally during all my pastimes. So if you're interested in other video games and watching me get some trophies, Maybe trophies I could help you out on. Why don't you swing by sometime? If you like it, stick around. If not, go about your business. But that being said, let's hurry on with the video. Now, with these kinds of games, and by these kinds of games, I mean games that come with a shit ton of collectibles, I like to go over the collectibles first and go over all the miscellaneous trophies afterwards. So we're going to be jumping right into the collectibles. And there is a ton of them, so strap in for the ride because you're in for the long run. It's going to be a long video. Now, all of Chapter 2 is going to be pretty straightforward. You could just pretty much use the video footage and follow along in order to find the collectibles. Chapter 2 is fairly linear. Nothing like Chapter 3, which is hugely open world. So, until we get to Chapter 3, I'm just going to be talking about something that you guys may really want to take into consideration when you're going for your Platinum in this game. Uh, kind of an important tip, which is you may want to start your game on Nightmare difficulty. Now, the reason for this is because if you don't play your first playthrough on Nightmare difficulty, you're going to have to play a minimum of three playthroughs of this game. Whereas if you start on Nightmare, you only have to play two. So I'm trying to save you guys time. If you guys want to completely optimize your uh, number of playthroughs in accordance with the trophies, um, I would highly recommend starting the game on Nightmare. It may seem daunting at first, but Nightmare is actually not too bad. It's not too crazy. Um, nothing like classic mode anyway. And uh, I would recommend it because you only unlock the brass knuckles by beating Nightmare difficulty or higher, and you need the brass knuckles for the trophy to get all the weapons in the game. So I would highly recommend it. But anyways, enough about that. We're already done chapter two. This is your first side mission you're going to come up to when you first meet O'Neill. Just uh, exhaust his dialogue, and he will give you the mission. You can see at the bottom right there, the mission has begun. And you're gonna find your first coffee maker. This is the beginning of Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is, like, honest to God, half of this game. Like, Chapter 3 is fucking massive. It's the biggest chapter in the game by far. Um, and it takes a very long time to clear this chapter and do everything there is to do in it. And Chapter 3 has, like, I want to say, like, 25% of the collectibles. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, there's, there's so much shit in Chapter 3, it's crazy. But as you're going to see, there's our first key right in front of the, uh, I forgot what this building's called. But, um, you're also going to find your first file inside the building here. And on the church to the right of said building, you're going to find your next key. Uh, you won't be able to get it until after this little cutscene. You're going to see this little event, and then you're going to have uh, a few guys to kill here. But once you take them out, you'll be able to get the key behind the altar. There you go, there it is. And, uh, easy peasy. Next up is going to be the building to the left of the Vision Center, I think it was called. 
or visitor center rather vision center i'm thinking of my fucking work uh pick up the broken sniper there you're gonna need it for the trophy to get all weapons in the game you can repair the sniper and turn it into an actual sniper uh and also the file on that guy's corpse but here we're gonna be quickly covering three trophies in succession here real quick um this is the location of the warden crossbow it's like impossible to miss this i don't know how anyone can miss it but in case you need to know exactly where it is bottom left of the map chapter three you're gonna see a big parking lot and once you pick it up you're gonna trigger a little event here um this car alarm is gonna go off and it's actually going to activate this fire hydrant which is gonna bring a shitload of enemies over to you uh so just hide for a minute until they all gather around but um this actually goes with a couple trophies here. Uh, you can actually shoot a shock bolt, which you start with one here as soon as you pick up the crossbow. Uh, you get a shock bolt to go with it. And if you fire this shock bolt into the water, you can actually chain lightning everyone who's standing on top of the water. Uh, and that itself is a trophy. And also, when you shock bolt enemies, they fall to the ground, allowing you to stomp them. And there is a trophy to get, I believe, 15 stomp kills. So there you go covering three trophies in one real quick uh that's how you do that if you need more stomp kills use more shock bolts easy peasy uh and this is going to be your first residual memory it's actually in the same parking lot that we just picked up the warden crossbow it's just a little further north of the crossbow and uh directly left of there a little further up you're going to see these uh, abandoned train cars and there's also going to be your next key hidden uh, tucked away behind this uh kicked over van here and there you go there's that one and you're also going to get your next uh, mysterious object actually this is your first one it's going to be in this car here however uh note the footage here i love how i didn't even see that enemy you could see him clear as day uh this guy won't be here for you if you come and grab this item when i'm telling you to, to like right now if you were to grab it right at this point in the game from when you got the residual memory that guy won't be there so you don't have to worry about that he was only there for me because I forgot to get this item and I had to come back and get it before I finished chapter 3. And that enemy spawns there if you wait that long to do that. So I got fucked by him. But there's your next residual memory. It's going to be in the train car adjacent to the one we were just in. Uh, and there's a ton of enemies before that residual enemy. You'll know when you see a shitload of guys. Uh, but next up, this is going to be covering the all weapons trophy. Which is the laser sighted pistol. Um, there's four different pistols in this game, and this is going to be the first alternate one that you get, uh, aside from your default one. Uh, you have to come to this, uh, abandoned parking lot here, and you're gonna have to tango with this enemy. But, uh, once you finish him off, which should be easy, it's just one guy, you can go ahead and, uh, claim your reward. And there you go. That's a little further north of the train cars, uh, directly south of where we are now, which is top left of the map. And now you're going to find your next key, but we're also going to cover a couple things here. So go ahead and grab your key on the uh, back side of the shed. You'll know you're in the right space when you see the, uh, the large, smoky coffee lady. I don't know what else to call her. Uh, sneak past her, break your way into the shed, and you will be able to find your missing component to repair the sniper rifle, thus awarding you the sniper rifle which you need for the all weapons trophy so go ahead and grab the parts and then if you use the workbench you can actually uh create the gun and the sniper rifle if you land a headshot on the smoky lady kills her in one hit uh fun fact i love to use that weapon against those enemies so there you go and this space just outside the shed is perfect for this trophy kick shoot burn to kill two or more enemies using oil on the ground so there's a ton of enemies here that are just lying on the floor, and if you alert them by shooting them, they're going to come after you. I really like this spot to get this trophy because you're completely in control of the situation. You trigger the enemies when you shoot them, and you already have the oil set up when you kick the barrel, and you don't have to worry about any enemies until you shoot them. So it's nice. You get to, like, control the flow of the situation. And there you go. I'm on nightmare difficulty throughout this entire footage. And that oil was enough to kill them both from full health. So that was actually pretty shocking. Most uh, most stage hazards take more than one hit on Nightmare difficulty. But that only uh, took one hit for some reason. So that was cool. But here you go. This is going to be the uh, safe house on the far north side of the map. The very top of the map. 
Um, and you're going to find your next residual memory. And also, if you come into the safe house, every single safe house in this game has a coffee maker. So this is going to be your second one. There are two coffee makers in Chapter 3. Who'd have thunk? But uh, that's going to be your next one. You're probably going to need it with uh, the ass beating you took to get here. I know I did. And uh, you're also going to find a file in this very same safe house just on the counter there. So go ahead and grab that. And then if you head back a little further south, uh, this is directly right of the parking lot where we got the laser-sided pistol. Uh, you're going to find your next key right on the porch here. Let's go ahead and grab that. And next up, we're going to be heading to our Rogue Signal side quest. You can see where you're supposed to go on the map via the green circles. And you'll find your next residual memory when you enter the house that the uh, map tells you to enter. Now, from here, you can actually make your way into the Marrow, which is a sort of side dungeon, but not really. The Marrow, you have to enter the Marrow several times in this game. But this is the first time you can enter it. And there are several different ways into the marrow, but once you clear out this entire section and get to the very end, you will find your shotgun. I'm not going to show all that shit because it takes forever. Um, there is a white knife lady down here, and those enemies are terrifying, so be aware of that. But as you're on your way back out, this elevator is going to open. This is where the white knife lady would be, but she's already dead for me because I killed her. Um, and if you just head into the elevator where those guys came out of, you can find your next key. Nice hidden tucked away key in here. Uh, but we got it. Can't fool us, game! And again, near the laser-sided pistol. We're gonna be going into the left house, uh, just south of the laser-sided pistol, where we got it. And there's gonna be another residual memory inside here. Um, and then you're gonna have to finish this little, uh, power puzzle in order to turn on the power, which you could use to lift the car. And then enter the basement of this building in which you will find your next residual memory. So there you go. We're already at six. It's crazy how many collectibles are in this chapter. This chapter is just utterly massive. You get so much shit by the time you're done chapter three. It's crazy. But uh, proceed a little further into the basement. You have to come this way in order to get out. So it's kind of hard to miss that file on the desk there. But once you got that, this is going to be uh, just right of the safe house to the north. And you can find this key at the pit stop sign. So there you go. Here's the next key. And this house is going to be uh, a little south and to the right of where we were just standing. And this house is very important. Uh, it's got a lot of events in here. This is actually technically the first anima event out of four. Uh, a lot of people think there's only three anima events, but I think this, this is considered an anima event, even though anima isn't actually in this part. Uh, but you'll find the file here in the garage there. So go ahead and pick that up. Um, but yeah, even though Anima is not actually at this house, uh, this counts as an Anima event, I believe, because it's still addressing Sebastian's uh, traumatic past, which is what the Anima events are all about. And this is the first time you get to see that. So I, I would consider this part of that uh, little side quest line. But here you go. Uh, just follow the steps I'm doing. You have to run it all around this house in order to trigger each scene. But you'll get this file if you come in this room uh, at this point after looking at the TV. Once you do that, I think you're going to want to run back here to the garage. And then it's going to lead you back to the kitchen from here, if memory serves. Uh, just keep running all around the house, clicking on everything if you're lost. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll trigger this little scene here. And then once this finishes, you'll be able to enter the bathroom. So there you go. And then once you've done that, you'll actually be in this little exclusive area, which you can only get by doing this event. And you're going to get your first, or sorry, not your first, your second photographic slide. And you need these, because they're collectibles for trophies, if that wasn't already fucking obvious. But there you go. And that's going to be the first Anima event. So there you have it. Uh, just continue the event and uh, make your way out. Pretty easy. I showed the rest of it because, I don't know, this house is, can get confusing with, you know, everywhere you got to run around and shit and click on shit, so I figured I'd show it all, but there you go. There you have it. Moving on. So next up is going to be uh, our next mysterious object, which is over on the right side of the map here, over in the forested area. 
Uh, if you climb this, the roof of this house, you'll have a small top enemy you can quickly take care of. And you will find the mysterious object on the roof alongside that enemy. There you go, that's a quick reference. Uh, Easter egg. There's a bunch of Bethesda Easter eggs in this game. Uh, so now we're going back to the visitor center uh, via the continuing the rogue signal side mission. Actually, this is the end of the mission. Uh, you come in here, you'll get your next residual memory. You'll find out what happened to these fuckers. And fuckers they are. These guys are assholes. I'm glad Stefano killed them. Boom! That's the end of him. Uh, but you can also get your next file if you go over to the desk and investigate his uh, literal communicator that he left behind. Well, not really left behind. He didn't really have a choice. Thanks to Stefano. But there you go. Pick that up. And once you have this communicator, you'll be able to bring it to O'Neill and thus being able to finish the rogue signal side quest. This is, this, uh, this is, there's only two side quests, I believe. Or, well, technically there's like three. Um, the other two are with Sykes, which is a, another character you will meet later. But this is the first one with O'Neill. Fairly easy to do. The side missions are very straightforward if you just follow the map. The map always shows you where you need to go with the green circles, like I said. So as long as you do the side missions before you actually advance the story, which I always recommend doing, uh, that way you don't miss them, you'll always be able to clean them up, and the game always gives you proper directions, so. But here's gonna be the next key, far north, this is the furthest north of the map you can go, you will have to come here in order to proceed the, or advance the story, but you can find this key on the back side of the house here, hidden away, and next up is gonna be the next anima event so if you come into this house here uh towards the right side of the map investigate the house uh come in the bedroom here and you will find your next file so there's gonna be that one and when you try to leave you're gonna have to uh tango dance with anima which is a terrifying enemy in this game if she touches you you die one hit uh, I would not recommend going for any of the anima events in classic mode b because of the, the high risk factor that the fact that she could kill you in one hit if you fuck up, which would be huge on classic mode, so don't do that. But at the end of the event, you always get a photogra photographic slide, so there was that one. And this is going to be when you get to the warehouse and you need to advance the story when you're following uh, Lily's trail. But if you come back here, open up the truck, you'll find your next... Mysterious object. That was a Wolfenstein Easter egg, I believe. And this is going to be inside the warehouse when you're following Lily. Uh, this room is right before the room that has Lily's doll. And now, at the beginning of Chapter 4, you will be able to access the shooting gallery. So, I would just recommend getting this out of the way. The shooting gallery is a bit of a pain because... There's two keys that you can only get from the shooting gallery by completing the shooting gallery's two different modes. And you have to get a high enough score on both in order to get the key, which is a bit of a pain in the ass uh, because the shooting gallery is completely skill-based. You just have to be good at it in order to get the keys. So it's going to take some practice, but as you can see, I'm very hard for the uh, first mode here. Uh, this is the mode, or on very hard is the only round where you can actually get the key. And uh, you're going to need a high enough score. So this is me showing you how to get it. Uh, it's not too difficult. This only took me a couple tries, to be honest. But uh, it can be rough. But you see that clock in the top left there? If you actually shoot it, time slows down for like, I don't know, I want to say for like five seconds. And uh, when the shitload of enemies pops up, like right now, that would be a great time to use the, the clock. I actually didn't use it because I wanted to save it for Ruvik. Because if you kill Ruvik, he gives you a shitload of points. So I wanted to save it for him. Uh, and I did well enough that I didn't need to uh, use it on anything else. So that ended up working out great. Uh, kill these last few enemies here. And there you go. As long as you get a score over 3,000, you will earn the key. And that's going to be the first mode. That one's much easier than the second mode, unfortunately. The second mode's much more annoying. But uh, I will show you how to do that one as well. So this is going to be the chain attack mode. And we're going to need... I fucking missed it because my footage is going too fast. But So the, essentially with this mode, notice how uh, when enough colors are next to each other, the all the panels start shaking uh, rapidly. What that means is, I believe... 
that's 12 panels that are next to each other of the same color. And every time you shoot that many, uh, you are awarded an hourglass panel. Now, what the hourglass panel does is it changes all the panels around it to the same color, which is nice, and it awards you extra seconds on the clock, five seconds to be exact, uh, which gives you more time to get a higher score altogether. But, um... As you see, the better you do, you're, you're going to be introduced to a fourth color, which is going to be purple. It's going to start appearing any time now. And, uh, one, yeah, there you go. So once purple gets in, uh, this becomes much harder to do. Uh, so I recommend getting as, as big as possible chains that you can during the first half to get as many points as you can. And uh, I like to save my hourglasses for as long as I can without letting the time completely run out. Um, so that I can try and get some big combos. But once all four colors are in, it's really hard to get a big combo, so... But, uh, as long as you do well enough in the first half of the game, you can get enough points by the end of it in order to get what you need. I believe you need 70,000 to get the key. But as you can see at this point, uh, it's too difficult to earn any more hourglasses, so now I'm just going ham shooting any, uh, multiple color panels in a row that I can find. Uh, and by this point, you can just kind of go crazy with it. And I just managed to get over 17,000 before the clock ran out. So that was beautiful. And there you go. Luckily, in both modes for the shooting gallery, the key isn't the final reward. Um, so they're not like, they don't feel impossible to get, which is nice. With some practice, you can definitely get them. But they are a bit tricky. So anyways, showed you how to visually get them in order to most help you out. This is going to be once you enter the Marrow in Chapter 4. Uh, your first file is going to be on the desk there. And this is the part where you enter the first person area and you're not allowed to use your guns because there's uh, gasoline everywhere. But, uh, fun fact, that enemy I just killed, the smoky coffee lady, um, if you're playing on Nightmare difficulty or higher, she's going to take two knife hits, or two stealth hits, rather. Um, I showed her go down in one, but that was because I skipped into the footage. She does take two hits if you're on Nightmare or higher, so just be aware of that. Uh, and the key is just going to be directly across from her. And there you go. So you get that one. And then once you finish that area, you end up coming out of the basement. You're going to have another computer on the left here with your next file. And that's going to be that one. We're already at 16. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, and your next memory is going to be just before you exit the marrow, uh, leading up to chapter 5. But there you go, that's that one. This is right before you crawl through the vent in order to get to where you need to be. And here is the next safe house. So we're also going to have our next coffee maker as soon as you get here. It's pretty sweet. So there's that one. A lot of, a lot of guides uh, like to write this as chapter 5, but it's not actually chapter 5. It's still chapter 4. Fucking idiots, fucking nerds! Pay attention! It's still chapter four, motherfucker. But uh, next key is gonna be behind the safe house as soon as you exit. You're gonna have to climb a ladder in order to get out here. Uh, but once you leave the building, there you go. Head around backside, grab your key. Now we're in chapter five, as you can see in the bottom right. And the first residual memory is gonna be right on your left there. Right from the moment you see the chapter five prompt come up. You can just run over here into the gazebo and grab it. Now, this file is unmissable. You have to do this in order to start the boss fight. And speaking of the boss fight, we're going to have to fight the Guardian. Now, with this boss fight, there are two trophies tied to this fight. There's one trophy to kill the Guardian, uh, which is much more straightforward because that's what you would assume that you're supposed to do. But there's actually another trophy, which is the one we're covering right now, to run away from her. There, you can actually run from this boss, not have to fight her at all, and skip the boss fight altogether. So I'm going to show you how to do that uh, with the least amount of dicking around possible. Um, I literally just make a beeline for the door. I don't waste any time. Although I do try to get her trapped on some shit, uh, which is why I crawled under that cord. I wanted her to like get stuck on stuff so that she wouldn't be right up my ass by the time I got to the door. But there you go. Blow up those uh, canisters. You'll remove the car. And you'll be able to access the back here. Um, and again, she is far enough away from me to give me some time to get ahead here. Uh, chop those boxes real quick. Triggering that tripwire is going to activate these bombs. However, as you can see, you won't get knocked over if you run into the cords from the furthest away possible. 
And then I quickly drop a shock bolt behind me, and I start mashing on the door as fast as I possibly can. Um, now, she will catch up to you here, 100%, but I find she always misses that first hit. I have playtested this like three, four times, and every single time she missed that hit, even though she, like, she was clearly right on top of me, she still missed. So don't worry about getting hit there, as long as you clicked X on the door, like, as fast as you possibly could, you'll be able to get through without her fucking you up. And this file is going to be in the first room you're going to see after you uh, go through that secret passage that I just showed you, escaping from the Guardian. Um, next up, you're going to have to do that little puzzle there with the camera. And your next file is going to be on your left here, down at the end of the hallway. So there you go. This stuff's really hard to miss, as long as you're uh, keeping open eyes, being observant. Because this is all along the way, like, you have to come this way. Like, it's very hard to miss these. But I'm just showing you where they are. Uh, this is all before the Obscura boss fight. Speaking of Obscura, there she is. Miss is beautiful. After she takes your picture a few times, just run around the back of the room. Pick that up. There's your next file. We're already halfway through the files. Jesus Christ. We're only on chapter 5. Uh, and this is after you beat Obscura. That file is going to be on your way out. And then once you come back in this room, this is where the floating guy was up in the air. Uh, you can now access this room, which you couldn't before. And it's going to have your key. So there you go. Next is going to be chapter 6 when you come back into the marrow. Uh, if you just run back here, look up up top on the pipes, you're gonna find your next key. We're almost halfway through with the keys as well. It's crazy. We're doing super swell. Um, and this is going to be once you start seeing the, uh, gooey semen all over the walls. Ew, gross! And then you're gonna get this cutscene. You have to finish watching it in order to pick up the slide. So just wait until the cutscene finishes. And this is after you sneak past the semen monster. Uh, right before you exit, you can find your uh, next mysterious object. Right on the left behind that box there. And this is going to be right before you get to the next safe house. You're going to notice this door where you need to complete the puzzle in order to unlock it. So go ahead and do that. And your next file is going to be inside. Again, this is right before Hoffman's safe house. Once you get inside, you'll have your next coffee maker. As I said, every safe house always has a coffee maker. So there you go. Drink up, motherfucker! Yay, 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 yay! Cup of Joe, mofo! There you go. And uh, your next file is going to be directly behind the coffee maker. Go ahead and grab a lap. There's that one. And once we're done with Hoffman Safe House, uh, when you're headed to the next area towards Chapter 7, you immediately find another safe house, which is going to have immediately another coffee maker. We're only two away, folks, from all coffee. Uh, but once you leave the safe house, you're going to notice your first residual memory of the chapter. And so there you go. And this is right before Chapter 7 is going to start. Uh, you will have to go to the top left and click on the photo in order to start Chapter 7, in case you're wondering. You could explore this entire map while it's still Chapter 6, so it's kind of easy to confuse yourself there. But there's that next one. Next residual memory is behind the house where we just got the key. Now, be warned, as soon as you activate this residual memory, a Guardian's gonna spawn and try and fuck you up. So, just be ready for that. Be ready to run. Because it's gonna go down. Now, this is over by the diner, which is over in the bottom right of the map. Go ahead and shoot the key off the roof there. And it's as good as yours. Easy, uh, 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 peasy. Now, this is behind the diner, where we just were. We are still there, in fact. And you can find this key hidden uh, over by the dumpster. Let's go ahead and not miss. Don't be like me. And, uh, grab your key. Now, this is inside the diner. You'll find a residual memory. Now, be warned, when you activate this residual memory, you will unavoidably trigger the next Anima event. So, you will be forced into that. So, just be aware of that before you click on the memory. If you're not ready, uh, you will have to do the next Anima event. So, come over by the jukebox here, and you will trigger Anima. There she is in all her glory. Whoa! And once you finish the Anima event, I'm not going to show it because it takes too long. 
but as I said before, every time you finish an Anima event, you're always rewarded with a photographic slide, so that's going to be your next one. Go ahead and grab that off the body. Bada boom. There's me taking a swig of Corona in my live stream. Um, and this is going to be the next where you have to come for one of your story objectives. You have to come in this house, and the file is going to be just on the table there. Uh, pretty hard to miss. Pretty, pretty hard to miss. This is directly behind the house we were just in. If you come into the back alley here, you look up on the roof, and there is your next key. So there you go. Go ahead and grab that for yourself. And this is going to be over by your another story objective. Once you've uh, destroyed both paintings of Stefano's, you can go grab that. Uh, and this is going to be when you find Sykes. This is actually uh, back over towards the bottom left of the map. If you get, get anywhere near this area and you'll notice Sykes calling for help, it's really hard to miss him. But go ahead and take out all the enemies that are threatening his life and you'll be able to start his unique side quest. So this is going to be the second one you can get called Getting Back Online. Exhaust Sykes Dialogue once you meet him. This is also Psych Safe House, so you'll find your next coffee maker in here as well. But, uh, yeah, you will start the next um, side quest if you exhaust this dialogue, which will require you to backtrack back over to Hoffman Safe House and enter back into the marrow. So, we're going to cover that right now. So, this is where it asks you to go if you look at your map when you backtrack to Hoffman Safe House and enter the marrow. Um, your map will tell you to come back here. This room was not previously accessible. It was covered by the, the semen monster's white goo. But now we can come in here now that she's gone. So backtrack, go ahead and click, clack, click on the computer. Come back to Sykes, and he's gonna be like, You did it! Now important about this, um, all the chests that you notice in this chapter that were previously locked are going to be unlocked. Open this one next to Sykes because it has the silenced pistol, which you need for the powerhouse trophy to get all the weapons in the game. So just don't forget to do that. And here we are. We're going to be back in the alley. I, I did this so retarded. Why am I showing this in this order? But this is back in the south alley where we got that key on the rooftop. And uh, you can find your next memory. And also... You can find your next mysterious object. Don't forget to click on that corpse where the memory just was because it's going to have a key for you. And you're going to need that key to access a locked shed over back here towards the north, uh, the top right of the map, where towards where Hoffman Safe House is. And uh, if you come in here, this is another like mini anima event. It's not like an official one, but she does try to attack you here. Uh, but go ahead and open this bad boy up to get the most awesome shotgun in the game. You're going to need that for the powerhouse trophy, so there you go. And this is going to be chapter 8. Once you finish everything in chapter 7, you got all your collectibles. Uh, this is right before the Stefano boss fight. You could come up top here, top floor of the theater. Right before you trigger the scene, you could come up here and get your next residual memory. So there you go. We only need 10 more. And this is, again, right before the Stefano boss fight. Uh, you have to come this way. You cannot miss this. But there is going to be a key hidden along the path. If you just pay attention, look behind one of these walls that you have to hide behind from the evil eye. Go ahead and pick that key up. Next up is going to be Chapter 9. Uh, you'll notice these flame lanterns in Chapter 9. You can only find these lanterns in Chapter 9. Now, if you're on Nightmare difficulty, it's going to take more than one lantern uh, from full health on the enemies there. But kill more than, uh, kill at least two enemies minimum with the flame lanterns and you could get a trophy for yourself. Now, if you go ahead and remove the crank here over in the cell in chapter 9, you'll, uh, open up all the cells by doing that, which will allow you access to this key. This is on the opposite side from where we got the crank. And this is the room from where the white knife lady came out. Um, can't miss her. And if you just come over in here, you can get your next file. There you go. Now, this is going to be on your way out towards the end of Chapter 9. Uh, if you just pay attention to all these cells on the way, you could go ahead and crawl through the hole and find your next memory in this hidden room here. You cannot access this room from the outside door because the door is locked. 
you do have to crawl through the hole like I did. And this is going to be at the very end of Chapter 9, right before you do the blood puzzle to open the door. If you'll notice, there's a key up top there on the statue. Just shoot it down. There you go. Easy peasy. There's only one collectible in Chapter 10. This is right after the big cabin fight with Torres. Uh, go ahead and look up right after the fight finishes. And you could get your next key. There you go. Chapter 11, when you get to Torres' safe house, this is right at the beginning of Chapter 11, you could get your final coffee maker. There you go, all your cups of joe in the bag. No more coffee to worry about. And we're moving right along. There's also a file in here, along with the coffee maker in Torres' safe house. So go ahead and grab that before you leave. And there you go. And this is going to be when you open up the path in the marrow to get back to Hoffman's safe house. You'll notice things look crazy now because Father Theodore is fucking shit up. But you can find your next photographic slide right on the desk there. So don't forget that. And then this is once you get back to Hoffman's safe house for like the millionth time. You can find your next residual memory. Pretty fucking difficult to miss this. You have to come this way in order to advance the story. So there you go. Go ahead and grab that. But before you leave, don't forget to click on Hoffman's computer, which you couldn't previously click on because she was using it, and we weren't allowed to click on it while she was sitting there. But now that she's gone, go ahead and grab your file. So there's that one. And also, don't forget to go into the save point at some point during this chapter because you will find your next photographic slide for some reason in your office. I don't know why it randomly decides to spawn at this point in the game, but there it is. You can go back and get that. There's that one. And this is further as you're progressing into Chapter 11, as you're trying to find out Hoffman's whereabouts. If you just come into the side office here, click on the computer before you go down the elevator. There you go. This is when you get further down, following Hoffman's trail. You have to come this way to advance the story, but you will find this residual memory. Can't miss it. Now, immediately after that residual memory, if you go into the left room here and look up on the roof, you will notice a hidden key! Let's go ahead and shoot that down. There you go. And a little further into the left room, you will find our next file. So don't forget to grab that as well. Uh, here's me picking up a bunch of useless shit in the footage because, hey, I like to waste time. So there you go. There's the next file right on the board there. Now this is over on the opposite side of the room for where we just were. Make sure you come into this room and grab your file before you head upstairs. And the next and final Anima event, you'll notice this shutter here, which you can only open using a shock bolt, like a few previous doors we've stumbled upon during this playthrough. So go ahead and crawl under the door. This is, like I said, the final Anima event. Uh, come into this office here to click on the computer to trigger it. It's also going to be your next file. And you're definitely going to want to make sure you do all the anima events leading up to this one because this one gives you not only your next collectible photographic slide, but it's also going to give you your next weapon for the powerhouse trophy. If you just backtrack from here, you can trigger the anima event. Oh, oh and this is during the anima event, actually, when you're running away from her. Uh, you could find two files on each of the side rooms here before you advance make sure you investigate and grab these before you press on so there you go next two files we almost have every file in the game that's disturbing uh and then this is at the end of the anima event as soon as you finish shoot yourself in the head you'll be ported back to the office you were in and you will have as i was trying to say your next weapon which is going to be your revolver from the first game. This is the best handgun in the game, and it's fucking awesome, might I add. Definitely going to want to grab this. But there you go. Once you finish the event, you're awarded that, as well as your next photographic slide. You can see it there on the desk in front of you. So go ahead and grab that. And then you could be on your way. You're done with Anima. You never have to fuck with that bitch again. She will never one-shot your ass ever again. Rejoice. And this is going to be upstairs from the previous area. Uh, first door on your left, you're going to find this residual memory. i show you on the map where it is. Like I said, this is the top floor of the area we were in. If you look up top, there you go. There's where it is. 
And directly across from here, you're going to have to come into this room to get the chip out of the guy's head in order to advance the story. But if you click on the terminal here, you can get your next file before you do that. Just don't forget to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is during the boss fight when you fight O'Neill as the Harbinger. There's a unique trophy during this boss fight, which requires you to blow up his flame canister, which is on his back. All you got to do is, uh, this is what I like to do. I like to just lead him running around this desk. Uh, whenever he shows his back to me, I just take pot shots at the canister. And eventually, it will blow up. Once you see it blow up, you're good. But this trophy's fucking stupid, so let me just warn you about why this trophy's stupid. And what I recommend doing. Once you blow up O'Neill's canister, he becomes a beast. The boss fight gets, like, ten times harder. Um, as you can see, you blow up the canister, and now he has no access to his flamethrower attacks. But, what this ends up making him do is it makes him become a relentless, aggressive monster. He will literally never stop chasing you. He will always be sprinting after you, and he'll just spam melee attacks. And his melee attacks do a shit ton of damage. So, I don't recommend fighting him like this. I would recommend, once you get the trophy, to just restart the fight and fight him properly. Because it's actually easier. But once you kill him, don't forget to grab the broken flamethrower that he's gonna leave behind on the floor there for you. That is very important for the uh, powerhouse trophy. Don't forget to grab that. And as you're pressing on through chapter 11, you will find this uh, final residual memory of the chapter uh, showcasing what happened to O'Neill. But there you go. Don't forget to grab that. And I mean it when I said that flamethrower was important. You need it for like multiple trophies, so don't forget to grab it. And this is going to be at the end of chapter 11, I believe, right before Torres asks you if you want to blow up the thingy there. Forgot what it's called. Go ahead and... Shut up, phone. Go ahead and grab your key hidden behind. And this is going to be chapter 12. Right after the first area, you open that big door I was just looking at. And once you come through there, if you just look behind this first wall, you're going to see you will find your next file hidden on the desk here. It's pretty straightforward. You have to come through that big door in order to get here, so... It's pretty easy to use it as a landmark. And here you go. This is Chapter 12's uh, unique trophy. You're going to have to investigate three different spots during this little reminiscent scene Sebastian has of being back home. So once this starts, I'll show you. There's actually a few collectibles in this house as well. So first collectible you're going to actually be able to find is in Lily's room. It's going to be the first room you come up to as you... Uh, progress through the house. So just come quickly into Lily's room and you will find your next photographic slide here on the desk there. So go ahead and grab that once Sebastian shuts the fuck up. You can pick it up. Now make your way out of Lily's room and across the hall from here. And you can find your next collectible. It's going to be in, uh, I believe, Sebastian and Myra's bedroom. So once you Actually, no, this is Sebastian's office. Never mind. But there's your next Easter egg collectible from the Elder Scrolls. Woohoo! And if don't leave the room yet, because you need to click on Sebastian's desk, and it's going to be the first part of this trophy that you'll be able to advance. So go ahead and click there. Uh, Sebastian will say some shit. Once you've done that, you can leave. So go ahead and make your way out of the office. And But before you go downstairs, make sure you look at the wall at the child drawing. Because that's going to be the next thing you got to click on in order to get this trophy. So go ahead and click on that. Once again, once Sebastian shuts the fuck up, make your way downstairs into the living room. Anytime now, Matt. There you go. Make your way down. You're going to see Lily run across like, Wow, Frail! And you're going to be like, What the fuck? And then you walk into the living room and just go ahead and click on the wall unit here, a picture of Myra, and Sebastian will... Uh, longingly admire his uh, long lost wife so you can listen to him chat about that for a bit but that's all you got to do just investigate those three points and you will get the trophy for this chapter and just make sure you don't miss any of that stuff and you're good to go next up we're advancing the powerhouse trophy once again we're going to find the assault rifle this is right after chapter 12 uh, right after that house scene we were just looking at You'll find uh, Torres has been killed, but you will be awarded with her trusty assault rifle. So go ahead and pick that up before you leave, as it does count towards the powerhouse trophy. So there we go. We go ahead and got that. 
And now we're going to be making our way back to a familiar area. But before you go uh, leave the marrow, Sykes is actually going to call you up on his phone and be like, Hey, hey we're best buds. You want to help me out? And this is going to be the um, final side quest mission that we're going to need for the trophy. Um, now, he won't actually call you here if you didn't help him previously. So make sure you do all the side quests in order in order to have this one appear here. Uh, there we go, the last step, that's how you're gonna know you started it. Now, as I said, make your way, uh, over back to familiar area. As I said, this is the chapter 7 area, except it's chapter 13 now. But there are some new, uh, collectibles in this area, so if you just come over here, there used to be a residual memory here, but now there's a key! So go ahead and grab that. And once you make your way out of the safe house, uh, you will notice these harbingers, these, uh, O'Neill ripoffs. There's gonna be three of them running around on the map here. But you will need to kill at least two of them because they do drop this flamethrower fuel. And you will need these parts in order to repair the broken flamethrower. Like I said, you need a minimum of two of them. So you will have to kill two of these guys. And they are pretty rough. Uh, but they're also very easy to exploit uh, with stealth kills. But uh, there you go. You kill both of them. You get the two parts. Once you've done that, you can now officially repair the flamethrower, which is going to be great. You need the flamethrower for the powerhouse trophy, so just go into your inventory and make that real quick with your newly found parts. There's your flamethrower, and you're also going to need it for another trophy, which I will show you uh, in a bit. But until then, this is uh, when you go to meet Sykes, when he asks you to head on over, and he's going to tell you what you have to do for the next part of the side quest. So just exhaust his dialogue once again. And he's going to show you a new entrance to the marrow that he discovered. Uh, just enter the computer here across from Sykes in the safe house. And once you do that, he's going to ask you to kill all the enemies down here. I'm also going to showcase footage of me using ambush. There's actually a trophy to use the ambush ability, which you can learn from using uh, green goo at the save point. But there you go. Kill all the enemies in here and you will call Sykes and let him know it's safe. Then he will come down, and this will be the end of the side quest, and you'll be rewarded with not only your next weapon for the powerhouse trophy, but also another collectible. But, uh, that's gonna be the end of Sykes' side quest. There you go! Easy peasy! Make sure you do not ever, uh, miss this stuff, because if you ever advance the main story before you finish side quests, you will miss them, so just remember to always do side quests as soon as they become available. Um, and your photographic slide is going to be in the room where he just poured it out. Uh, look at me, silly me, I forgot to get it, now I have to run back. You idiot! Just run back in here and pick up your slide. That's going to be the second last slide. And if you further investigate this room, you can be awarded with your next shotgun. It's going to be the double barrel. Just open up this case here, and you'll get your shotgun. And it'll be great! I personally don't like this shotgun. I like the one I have better. This one deals more damage, but you can only shoot twice before you have to reload, which is fucking annoying. Uh, but there you go. There's that one. And now, once you leave the marrow from where you just were, Sykes will have left you a nice little note, which counts as your next file. So don't forget to grab that before you leave the safe house. And next up, this is going to be just outside of Sykes' safe house on the opposite side of the building. You can come back here, explore the debris, get your next key. Hey, that rhymed! And next up, this is going to be on the street. I always try to show you guys where the stuff is on the map so that you don't get too lost. But if you run down the street here, usually there's a big, uh, ton of big fat guys around here, but I already cleared them out. Uh, just be aware there's enemies all over the place here. I'm making this look easy! But I already cleared them out, like I said. But there you go, shoot down that key, and it is yours. So there's that one. And next up, your next key is going to be in a the house where we destroyed the Stefano painting. So just come back in here and grab that. And next up, we're going back to the diner, so if you just come into the bathroom of the diner, you can find yet another key. So as you can see, tons of new collectibles here that weren't here before. So make sure you're thorough. Now this is right before you finish Chapter 13. Now make sure when Hoffman asks you if you're ready that you say no. So that you could pick up this next file as well as the next mysterious object. 
If you say yes, you will miss this stuff. So just be very careful when you're talking to Hoffman. Uh, the next mysterious object is also in here with Hoffman. Uh, if you come behind the counter here, you can find your next mysterious object. There you go. Second last one. That is a prey Easter egg. And the final slide can be obtained by watching all previous 10 slides. So if you just have uh, watch all of them, you'll trigger this event here where the cat will lead you to the uh, chair that brings you to Tatiana. And Tatiana will give you the final slide. So there you go. And like I said, you got to watch all the slides prior to this one in order for this one to become available. So just make sure you do that and you can get it. Now this is after the fire walk, right at the beginning of chapter 14. Uh, you can't miss this, it's right along the way of where you're supposed to go. So go ahead and grab that before you press on. And this is gonna be when you find the all the fire dudes and the harbingers. If you come this way, which you have to in order to advance, there's gonna be a lever you need to pull in order to open the gate. Uh, go ahead and don't forget to grab that key, which is hidden in that uh, wheelbarrow, whatever the fuck that thing is. Right before the lever, and this is going to be the save point right before the next Harbinger area, so make sure you come in here and grab the file on the desk uh, before you go to the next battle. Don't forget! And this is right after the next Harbinger area, um, if once you come in here. You have to come this way again in order to advance the story, but don't forget to shoot this key off the pipe up top here. That's going to be your final key. There you go! That's all keys! And this is right before the Theodore boss fight. Uh, make sure you climb down this ladder and grab this residual memory before you start the boss fight, otherwise you will miss it. So make sure you don't do that. I had quite a bit of trouble activating this memory uh, because it was a dick. I, I don't know any other reason as to why. It gave me so much trouble. But there you go. Now, during the Theodore boss fight, you're going to have an awesome cameo appearance from Laura, which is the boss in the first Evil Within. And there is a trophy to kill her with the flamethrower. Now, if you're on survival difficulty or lower, you can kill her with a full clip from the flamethrower. You don't even need to hit her with the flame trap that's already in the boss fight. Uh, but if you're on nightmare difficulty or higher, you will have to hit her at least once with the flame trap in order to weaken her enough to be finished off by the flamethrower. If you just try to kill her on Nightmare Difficulty from full health with the Flamethrower, uh, you can't possibly have enough ammo to do it. So that's why I said make sure you hit her once with the Flame Trap first, and then bust out your Flamethrower to finish her off. But as long as you kill her using the Flamethrower, you will get the trophy. So that's why I was saying earlier why the Flamethrower is so important, and you can't miss it because you need it for this. So make sure you do that. Uh, this boss is fucking awesome. I, I love this boss fight in general. Like, all the shoutouts to the Evil Within 1 was just fucking amazing. I love the Keeper boss battle and this fight with Laura. It's awesome. These enemies were some of the best things about the first game, so it was really cool to see them again. Uh, I'm just sh showing all the footage of me. This is how long it takes to kill her on Nightmare difficulty. A lot of fun! Uh, but there we go. She's finally dead. Good riddance! Fuck you, Laura! I love you, though. You're great. And this is going to be the Smoke Assassin Trophy. In order to get this trophy, you need to kill three enemies with the fully max upgraded smoke bolts. Now, that's going to take a shitload of weapon parts to fully max out and completely upgrade the smoke bolts. Um, now, I didn't up fully upgrade the smoke bolts until this part of the game. This is the second last chapter in the game, chapter 15. And these enemies are actually really shitty enemies to get the trophy on because... They're much stronger than regular Lost. Um, these enemies are quite difficult to kill. And like I said, I'm also on Nightmare difficulty, so they're pretty tough. It takes me quite a few Smoke Bolts. But the final upgrade of the Smoke Bolt actually adds poison damage. So if you just keep shooting Smoke Bolts at these guys, they will eventually die from the poison. And if you can manage to do that, you will get the trophy. Um, but it has to be by the poison. They have to die from the poison. You can't walk up and stealth kill them. That doesn't count. So make sure you, you just let them die by the poison. Now, if you weren't on Nightmare Difficulty, let's say you were on Survival Difficulty, or even Casual, one Smoke Bolt would kill three regular Lost, so you wouldn't have to use as many as you saw me use in this clip here. Finally, they fucking died. That took forever. 
But, uh, it's, like I said, it's much easier to get it on a lower difficulty, so just be aware of that. And this is the final chapter, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the last four residual memory locations. As soon as chapter 16 starts, you can run up here and grab this one. And then there's going to be two more on your way to the final save point of the game. So I'm just going to show uh, directly where each location is. No sense in cutting the footage here. Not to confuse you guys, I'm just going to show you me running from each one. Show you exactly where they all are. Uh, I actually missed one of these on the first playthrough, which I don't know how I managed. Or actually, actually, I don't know if that's true. I might have made that up, but I remember missing one of those for some reason. But anyways, here's the uh, second last one before you get to the save point. And uh, make good use of that save point, because that is the last one in the game you will, be, uh, you will have access to before the final boss, so... Just be aware of that. And then this final residual memory is right before the final boss when you're running up the hill. So that's going to be the last one. And then after this, we're only going to have one collectible left in the game, but it's going to be after the final boss. So once you defeat Myra, you're going to have this scene with Kidman, and it's going to transition back to Sebastian in his house when he's coming to get Lily. But before you go upstairs to get Lily, make sure you run over to the living room here and grab the final collectible of the game, which is going to be the Keeper Easter Egg, yeah! And that's going to be all the collectibles. We got all files, all keys, all residual memories, all mysterious objects. We got it all! And once you beat Nightmare Difficulty, this is why I said this at the beginning of the video, you need to clear Nightmare Difficulty in order to unlock the Brass Knuckles. The Magnum you get for beating any difficulty, so you'll get the Magnum no matter what. But the Brass Knuckles you can only get by clearing Nightmare Difficulty, which is why I strongly urged you guys at the beginning of the video telling you guys you may want to start your first file on Nightmare so that you don't have to play an extra playthrough to get the Brass Knuckles. But as you can see, I'm just showing off the Brass Knuckles right now. Um, kills most enemies in one punch, which is fucking awesome. It's a lot of fun, this weapon. Too bad you don't get to enjoy it for very long. And also, once you beat the game, you will unlock the... Uh, letterbox which you can activate in the settings menu here so i'm just showing you where it is in the menu and go ahead and activate the letterbox and once you do uh you'll get a trophy for it this is a shout out to the first game because when the first game came out it forced you to have the letterbox for some weird reason um so it's just a little shout out to the first game there you go activate the letterbox and there it is you'll get that trophy now, the final trophy I want to talk about is Classic Mode, and regarding Classic Mode, I'm not going to cover it in this video, because this video is already well long enough, we're already going on over uh, an hour here, but um, as you can see, I do have an in-depth Classic Mode guide, that is the thumbnail to my part one of my guide. You could go over on my cha channel and watch my Classic Mode guide if you want to know how best to get the trophy, so I urge you guys to do that. Go ahead and check it out. I put a lot of work and effort into that guide, and it's meant to help you guys get the trophy. So, we have officially covered all trophies. That's going to be all the trophies in the game. And now all that's left to do is just give this motherfucker a rating. So, I'm going to give The Evil Within a solid 7 out of 10, confidently speaking. Uh, maybe... Maybe it could be a little more than a 7, but I'd say 7 is a good fit for this game. Uh, simply because... Everything in The Evil Within is pretty gosh darn straightforward. Gosh darn, I don't say that too often. But uh, I digress. The trickiest thing about The Evil Within by far is Classic Mode. Classic Mode will really test your skills, and that is going to be the main thing that may or may not gatekeep you from this Platinum Trophy. That and probably the only other thing I can think of that's really skill orientated is the Shooting Gallery. Uh, to get the keys, but, I mean, with practice, that's really not all that bad, but there is still re skill required, and that's what it comes down to, uh, the fact that the absolute hardest things to do in this game have a skill cap, so, if you're good enough, and you put the practice in, and you care enough about this game, getting the Platinum should not be all that much of a worry for you at all, however, if you're just playing this game just because you want the Platinum, you may experience some difficulties if you don't care all that much for the game. But ultimately, I think it's a very doable Platinum, 
And like I said, all you really have to worry about is classic mode. But hey, if you check out my guide, it shouldn't be an issue. And with that, that is going to be it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. But before you go, I would just like to say once again that if you guys enjoyed the video, please, I'd really appreciate it if you guys left a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Show me some support because I pour my heart and soul into these videos, into making them. It takes a very long time, takes a lot of effort, and a lot of my free time in general, which is very hard to come by. So I would really appreciate the support. It would definitely help me out. And not only that, but if you guys ever want to come hang out with me, if you think I'm a fun dude from watching this video, it's even more fun in the live streams. I live stream all the time. Uh, I try to stream every single day. And I'm pretty good with it, in my opinion. So, And I think it'd be a lot of fun to have all these trophy hunters make and just make one huge big community of just awesome trophy hunting people and we could all talk about our trophy hunting experiences together and we could help each other out and i think it'd be a lot of fun so come on swing by if that if that sort of thing interests you if not that's fine no harm done but that's gonna be it for the video guys truly hope you guys enjoyed i hope it helped you guys out have a good one and i will definitely see you guys in the next one so have a good one everybody and if you didn't already don't forget to check out my other path to platinum videos because i do more than one game peace out